expedite my time. So, um, you know, as I said a minute ago, you know, millions, millions, millions around the world celebrate Easter every year. And for many people, the Easter story has become routine, boring, or religious. Now, I ain't even gonna, I'm not going to go into that. It's become routine, boring, or religious for, for, for many people. And, you know, most folks know, okay, he was arrested. He was crucified. He was raised from the dead. No, everybody in here know that. You only have to be a church goer to know that. And it's true. But there was something that I, I think oftentimes gets missed to happen in that of what he came for. So I want to talk about that today. And I guarantee you, if you will listen, take what God speaks to you about it, it will transform your life. And, you know, you won't, life won't be a struggle. And it won't be a series of peaks and valleys. Now, I want to go to John 3.16. Y'all know what that is? <laughs> Glory to God. John 3.16 says, I, I, I'll tell you what, let's quote the thing, okay? Ready? Let's do it. You know how to do it. For God so loved the world that he forgave All right. Now, God gave his son, right? Okay, that was Jesus. And so that whoever believes in him should not what? Do you know most of the time we used to put a period right after perish? Most of the time we quote it. Well, most of the time, a lot of the time people quote, God's the Lord of the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish. That's not why he gave Jesus. Why he gave Jesus is the next part. Should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Everlasting life. So I want to talk to you about this because um, if we can grab hold of this, and I'm going to go to John 17. If we can grab hold of this, man, Jesus, we, we sing those songs, and it'd be sound like Jesus is singing out of us, man, because he came for us to not only not perish, but to have everlasting life, to have it. When? Yeah. See, everlasting life, eternal life, we're going to look at those scriptures, but that's something we possess now. Everlasting life, eternal life is not length of days. It's not living forever, a length of days. It's a life that God gives us. The Bible calls it, the Greek word is zoe life. It's a complete life. It's our life is abundant life is is it's the God kind of life that he gave us when we believe on it, he gives us that and we live with that that's how we live with we live with that it's not something everybody gonna live forever sinner saint everybody gonna live forever it's just the destination yeah so it's not like you know so some people read that well you know well I'm gonna live forever because I believe God well Hitler is living forever So my destination of where I'm going to live and whether I'm going to be smiling or weeping is the, the thing. But eternal life, he gave us. Now, what is, this, what is this eternal life God wants us to have? Go to John 17. Hallelujah. And this is what we're going to talk about today. So his goal wasn't just to, his goal wasn't just to get me you know, he broke the curse of sin, but that wasn't his goal. Sin was just an, a barrier. He had to move out the way to get to what he really wanted. Okay, we're going to have some good time today, boy. This is going to be so good. John 17, 3. I'm going to let the Bible explain. Let Jesus explain. Jesus talked to us. Verse 3. And this is eternal life. What, Jesus? That you may know. That they may know you. He's talking about that, <laughs> that they may know God. This is eternal life, that they may know you. 
the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. <laughs> yeah, this is eternal life. That we may not know about him. A lot of folk know about him. But eternal life is that we may, we may what? Know him. know him. The only true God and Jesus. So that's why I want to talk. I'm going to talk about how Easter brought relationship. It's all about relationship. Because it does not matter. It, it does not matter how much I know about him. If, if I don't know him, I can't experience the power of the resurrection that he came to give me. And see, one of the reasons why some people have such a struggle with, with, with staying the course and just a struggle with, 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 with living by faith, one of the reasons there's a struggle, they don't know God. They know about him. Happy Easter. <laughs> and, so, and so this morning, we want to challenge our relationship with God. Do I really know him or do I know about him? Jesus went through all of that so I can know him. He, he to, that, so I can know him. The only true God. Ah. Okay, let's read this in the Amplified, please. Man, they got me fired up. I was fired up for a guy here. Verse 3. And this is eternal life. It means to know, perceive, recognize, become acquainted with, and understand you, the only true and real God. Isn't that awesome? Now, that we may know him. No, it's not just, oh, I, I, I know, I know, I know, Brother Fred. No, he, that's not like, no. He talking about, this is the same word that Mary, Mary said when the angel said, you came to her and said, you're going to have a baby. She said, uh, 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 I don't even get down like that. <laughs> she said, look, I, I, I ain't active. Okay, what did she say? I don't know a man. Same thing. I just, that was the King Friendly version. King James got one. King Friendly got one. Anyway. So she said, no, no, I have not been intimate with a man. The same word. No. Same word. So eternal life is that I may be, have intimate relationship. With God and with Jesus. That's what this is all about, y'all. Jesus didn't come just to sin. Yeah, to just forgiveness of sin. Yeah, it was there. See, that was the thing that was in the way to getting and positioning us for this loving, intimate, powerful relationship. So he said, okay, okay, let me die for the sin. Die for the sin. Now, come on, y'all. Come on into this relationship. Everybody in here. Everybody in here has access to that kind of intimate relationship. God is relevant. And he wants us not just to put it on, on Sunday or, or whenever you go to church. It's, he's, a, he's a living God. He's a, at Walmart God. He's at the uh, Planet Fitness God. He, he's at Taco Bell God. You, he better be a Taco Bell God. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he, he, he's the living God, man. And, and I'm going to show you in a minute why, how, how he, he desires so much to be intimate with you. You know, and I'm going to say that I hope, you know, sometimes I say, okay, I, 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 I'll, I'll work it in. So, so he so he says, eternal life is about knowing God and knowing Jesus, not just knowing about him. Intimate. Intimate. Adam and Eve had an intimate relationship with God, didn't they? Yes. You know, they had a set time of prayer. You know when it was? In the cool of the day. Now, I don't know what cool is in heaven, but it was because, you know, I'm sure everything was perfect. But they had a set time in the cool of the day. They had a time when they walked with God. Check this out. Consider this. Because see, most times people get serious about prayer and walking with God is when their back's against the wall. 
They didn't have any needs. They didn't have no. They didn't need no clothes. They didn't need. They didn't need to escalate. Their pantry. Their pantry was full, wasn't it? They were getting along. You know. Everything was good. In the garden hood. <laughs> neighborhood, neighbor. Everything was good. Listen, except for that one incident, they didn't even have to deal with the devil all day. Like you, they went in there, I bind you. No, well, they should have that one time, but but they didn't. So they weren't dealing with the devil all day. He he won't walk around like Jesus. I gotta go to Dr. Gardner and see about this hip. It wasn't none of that. But why were they fellowshipping with God? Because prayer is just fellowshipping. Why were they fellowshipping with God? What was their motivation? What was their motivation? You know what the motivation was? God, we love you. We have a relationship with you. They didn't have any need. Most of us come in there with our laundry list. You know, okay, the Bible said come to his presence with thank you. Thank you, Lord. Now, in Jesus' name, I just, they didn't have any motivation. It was all about this relationship that they, there was something inside of nobody. They didn't come to hear Ken Friendly preach. Something inside of them said, you know, we, oh, we, we're made to worship God. We're made to fellowship with God. They had an innate, innate uh, urge in it, that that thing, that vacuum was pulling them. I got to worship. I got to praise him. I got to have a relationship. He's good. That's the same thing in us. That vacuum's in all of us. Now, we fill it with all kind of stuff. We try to. We try to fill it with all kind of stuff. That thing that's pulling you is a relationship with God. Now you may you may find it to some dude, some some honey, you know, your hobbies. I don't know. But that vacuum's there. And so if you're here today and you're searching, you're like, man, shoot, I'm 47. I still ain't got it figured out. What I'm teaching you right now is how. Not only do you Get, 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 get that godly contentment. What did he say? Godly contentment. There's a contentment that comes from God. It's like nothing else. But it won't happen with our relationship. Can I talk to you some more? Yes, sir. All right. Well, let's, let's go to work. So, yeah. So, they, that was their motivation. Their motivation, their motivation was purely um, fellowship with God. Now, let me read this. Woo. Our number one purpose, the number one purpose of our lives is to know God and to love him. Listen, if we miss that, the purpose of relationship, if we miss that, if we miss that, we miss the reason why God put us on the planet. A lot of people want to, what's my purpose? What's my gift and all that? And I understand that. But your number one purpose is knowing and loving him. You want to find out what you're on the planet for? I mean, like, see, see, God didn't put you here just to do a bunch of stuff. So you check off your to-do list. God didn't put you here for that. God didn't put you here to, you know, the most... The most accomplished person. I mean, you can be accomplished, you can be talented, you can be gifted, you can be wealthy, you can be famous, and all of that. That means nothing if you have a relationship with God. A lot of times people, well, I'm doing this for the Lord. God said, I don't want you doing all of that. I want you. I want you. And see, what you do comes out of the relationship. And so now my motive is good, and the blessing of God is on the thing. How we doing? Yeah, okay. So, so that's what he's telling us. In Revelation 4, 11, you don't have to turn there. He said that we were created for his pleasure. We were created for his pleasure. Now, I want you to go to Philippians. Well, just look on the screen. Philippians chapter 3. This is a familiar scripture around Easter. How many of you saints want to go to distance? 
You know, I see. I've been we we've been walking with God like thirty something years, and and um, I see a lot of folks fall by the wayside. I can't see. Let me tell you this. Yeah, you can fake it for so long. <laughs> I tried to like it's Easter's. So I tried to as y'all be little, but. After a while, I'm talking about without a relationship with God, it can look like it. That's why you can't be judged. Don't judge people. You judge yourself. Yeah. And if I'm, I'm talking, if I'm talking to everybody, but you can fake a relationship with God so long. But you can't go the distance faking it. You can't go the distance just trying to look good for other people, looking like I got a relationship with God. That's not... No, no, because because <laughs> the longevity and the endurance of the relationship um, I mean, of my Christian walk hinges on how connected I am to Him, my union with Him. John fifteen. So Easter is all about yeah the sin we took care of that, but now we're talking about relationship. See, a lot of people got their sins forgiven, but they don't have eternal life. Some of you in here, you got your sin forgiven, but you don't have an intimate relationship with God. All of the glory belongs to you. <laughs> no, no, this is not a this is not a put down. It's just a this is a check. Okay, where am I? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna help you out in just a minute. So, all right. So in Philippians chapter three, verse ten. Thank you, Lord. Amplified. For my his Paul. Now here's Paul coming to the end of his life. Watch what he says. For my determined purpose is that I may know him. I thought he already knew. You've been preaching all these years, Paul. You, you went to all these fine Bible schools and, and theologian schools and cemeteries, I mean seminaries, and you've been sat under people, the greatest teachers of the land for that day, and you're talking about my determined purpose? Is that I may know him. Watch this. That I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. Say it one more again. Good God Almighty. Now, I want you to notice what Paul didn't say. Paul didn't say, my number one ambition is to start some more churches. My number one ambition is to be a bishop. He didn't say his number one ambition was to save more souls. He didn't say his number one ambition, my determined purpose, is to, is, is to get my rewards in heaven. See, some of us become so, so, so caught up in the doing that we don't have the relationship. Paul wasn't, we're so caught up in the achievements. Maybe I need to. We're so caught up in achievements. We so busy being busy <laughs> that we neglect our relationship. I don't care what kind of relationship you have, any relationship, physical or spiritual, one, one thing that is required in it is time. You got to give me some time. If we're going we gonna, to we gonna have a relationship, I need some time. We can't be so busy doing church stuff. That we have no relationship with God. I tell people all the time, listen, you know, I talked to somebody recently, and they said, well, you know, what's up? I said, look, don't sit down. Don't do nothing in church. Are you using that for excuse? Okay, I just knocked that one out the way. Don't do nothing in church then. Don't do nothing. But your relationship, I said, you have no relationship. <laughs> A lot of people get burnt out. You know why they get burnt out? 
because it's all, it's all, they have no relationship, so they're not drawing from that eternal life power. The flesh wears out. God wants a relationship with you. He doesn't want what you can do for him. He wants a relationship. If he got you, he can have you do all kind of stuff. Beyond your training, beyond your intellect, beyond what you, you he, he can do that. Okay. Whew. Yeah, the Paul said, no, I want to know him. I want to know him. My number one purpose in life is to have intimate relationship with Jesus. That's what Paul was saying. I want to know him better. He doesn't want us ever to stop hungering for God. Jesus died a horrible death, all of that. He does not want us. He said, I did that so y'all could have this life like I had it, so you can get back to the garden and even have it better than it was in the garden. God wants to live with you. He wants to be with you. He wants to walk with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants to lead you, guide you, show you. He wants to protect you. He wants to keep you. He, the Bible says he's able to keep us from falling. Amen. You can't keep yourself. So his motivation, be intimate with God. Never stop hungering for God. Hallelujah. Now, how you feeling? <laughs> All right. Now, I, I, you know, I'm up front. I want to, I want to provoke you to judge. Not Priscilla, 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 right? Yeah. I want you to judge Louis. No, I'm Louis. You judge you. No, I want you to judge yourself. What's your relationship with God like? Do you have a relationship with God? Do you have a cool of the day? That was the set time they had. Do you have a cool of the day where God, I just, I just, <laughs> How you doing? I just come by. I just stop by here to let you know. Boy, that sunshine you gave up today. Jesus. <laughs> Lord, I thank you. You, you. you met all that ice off my driveway. I'm, <laughs> so I ain't had to chip like I used to. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. In, 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 Cause see, a lot of time people, I'm going to show you how to get rid of bitterness. <laughs> okay. All right. Where do I want to go? Knowing, knowing him. I want to know him. I want to know the one who said he'll never leave me or forsake me. I want to know the one who said he will restore the years that were stolen from me. I want to know the one who said I'll restore health to you and I will heal all of your wounds. I want to know him intimately, the one who said he's my provider, he's my healer, he's my protection. I want to know the one who says I'll be your shepherd, you shall not want for nothing. That's the one I want to know intimately. He's the one who said, listen, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Don't worry about what they did for you, I got them. Amen. That's the one I want to know intimately. Glory to God. That's the one I want to know. And that's what's available to us. That intimate relationship. This is what anchors you, y'all. This is what anchors you. This is what anchors. See, the people I know that's going through hell and they still anchored. It's the ones that got a relationship with God. Yeah. This is what anchors you in them. Because didn't Jesus say, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. No, we're not exempt from all of that. But see, when you have a relationship with God, you just, listen, if it's rain, you put your, put your, your, your rain stuff on and, and you just keep it moving. And you keep on and your mouth keep moving too. This too shall pass. You know, no, no, I'm telling you, when you have that relationship, you, you already know, this is going to work out for my good. Yeah, we already know that. You know, God said, I'm never going to forsake you. I'm never going to leave you. When you got a relationship with him, you just sit there. Now, sometimes, now, sometimes. I'm not saying you just do it yabba dabba do, and then everything <laughs> is okay. Sometimes you got to sit there in his presence. Lord, I thank you. 
Lord, by the way, you know what? I ain't going to say nothing. You minister to me right now. <sighs> yeah, that was good, Lord. How many of y'all ever laid before the Lord? You, you talking about you meditating? Next thing you know, it's two hours later. God been ministering to you. <laughs> yeah, I do that all the time. I, he, I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Lord, thank you. I guess I can go to bed now. I'm serious. That's a, I know that ain't even right. Remember, Paul said, Paul said, I want to know him. This is why Paul was able. You know, I would think about this as a preacher. Golly. Now, Paul's in prison, right? And, and the thing, one of the hardest things for a preacher is not to be able to preach on a regular basis. He's in prison. But prison wasn't him. Because he had that relationship, he's in there leading a song service, a praise and worship service. Why? Because he got relationship. My hallelujah. Okay. So, now, I want to give you a couple of things to, uh, to help you with this relationship. Okay. Exodus 34, 14, please. A couple of things that God says about his relationship. New Living Translation on the screen. He said, you must worship no other gods. God is jealous, y'all. He doesn't like it when we put other things ahead of him. You shall worship no other gods for the Lord, whose very name is what? Jealous. Is a God who is jealous about his relationship with you. That's what God thinks about you. He's like, no, I, 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 and, and James it says that the spirit yearns jealously for you. God is after you. We cannot comprehend, we cannot comprehend how much God loves us. We cannot comprehend how much God values us. It's, it, we can't comprehend it. He values us. You know, he loves us in a way that's beyond us. But he said, no, nah, I'm jealous. Look at Hosea 6, 6, New Living. He said, I want to show you love. I want you to show love, not offer sacrifices. I want you to know me more than I want your offerings. Isn't that good? That's what I was saying a minute ago. See, God is not all that over the top about what you do for him. As he, is. he doesn't want your service. He wants you. Okay, that didn't go over too good. He doesn't want your service. You're not doing him a favor. I'm not doing him a favor coming to church. He doesn't want your service. He wants you. He said, your offering, I don't even want your offering. I want you. You can't buy me. You can't make me feel good about you because you put in the $10. You know, in America, we, we're good at throwing money at stuff. God's like, I want you. Why? God said, I get, I get you. I get everything you got. I can get your time. I can get your priority. I can get your money. And, and, if, and if I got you, and if I got you, I'll give you more of everything that you're trying to hold on to. I don't, want you, I don't want your sacrifices. I want you. Can you hear the tone and tenor of God? I want you. He's saying that to everybody here this morning, everybody listening to me, I want you. I want you. I want you. You can go to church every week. You can, you can, you can sing every song and not have a relationship. You can preach. You can pastor. You can pastor a church and not have a relationship with God. You can be so busy being busy and, and thinking, and in your mind thinking, I'm doing the Lord's service. Well, no, my service, Father, I submit myself to you. Lord, flow through me. What do you want me to say? What do you want me to preach? How do you want me to deal with this situation? Service is giving yourself to God in spite of what people think. This is how you get free from people. 
the opinions of people and the mouths of people. This is how you get free from, from, from being validated by people. How? By my relationship with God. Is it too strong for an Easter service? Awesome. <laughs> I know it's not. Y'all are good people. Okay. So, how does the flawed, imperfect person, specimen like us, have a relationship with the omnipotent, majestic, holy God? Real quick. Um, <laughs> first of all, make him a priority. That's why he says, seek first the kingdom of God. Well, it's only through Jesus. Got to come through Jesus. But he says, seek first the kingdom of God. I wrote this down. I'm only as close to God as I want to be. I'm as close to God as I want to be. You know what that means? I determine how close I get. I can't blame it on anybody else or anything else. I'm as close as I want to be. So wherever you are, that's where you want to be. Because that's where you are. Because he said, you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. We're all in different places, so I'm not throwing rocks. Man, I judge myself. I said, boy, I'm like, man, shoot. I'm saying, I'm, I'm serious. I'm like, dog, I need this. Okay. Because, see, when you have a relationship, you can trust him. The reason why a lot of people don't trust God, they don't, they don't know him. I wrote down something. Let me see if I can find it. Friendship. Yeah, listen to this. Every friendship is built on trust. Now, what's the difference between an acquaintance and a friend? With acquaintance, you'll talk and laugh, have a good time. But, with the, but, you, but you trust friends. You laugh and talk with acquaintances, but you trust friends. You could spend eight hours with one person, laugh, have a good time, and not trust them. You can go on vacation with them and not trust them. A friend, and that's why, you know, we kind of like, we don't, we, we, we don't use that word loosely. We have a lot of acquaintance, but I can't trust. I don't know if I can trust you. Well, some people I know I can't trust. <laughs> but, no, really. I'm 60 years old. I mean, golly. I, some people I know I can't trust. Don't you have no some people you can't trust? Shonda. Melissa. Tasha, okay. But no, but no, no, your acquaintance, you laugh, have a good time, drink a latte together, but don't trust them. Your friends, that's why you only have a few of them. And you, you got to know where to, you got to know where to put them. No, we do over here. Okay, so, so, but your friends you trust. Um. When you're in a relationship with God, you can trust him. Come on. You can trust him in your pain. Come on. You can trust him when you just don't understand. God, I don't understand. You can, you can trust him when it, when it looks good. You can trust him when it looks bad. When you have relationship, when you have relationship with you, something inside, you always say, this will turn for my good. I know in whom I believe. Yes. Hallelujah. When you, when you have a relationship with him, you can trust him. And he said, he said, he said, hold fast. Don't, don't let it go. I can trust him. I can't see it, but I trust him. I don't understand it, but I can trust him. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I trust him. Why? I got a relationship. The reason why a lot of people bail on God is no relationship. Can I give you some more? Okay. Y'all doing good. You'll never experience a powerful relationship with God until you are gut level honest with him. Honest about your fears, your faults, your flaws, your weaknesses. Honest about your insecurities. Honest about your friends, about everything. You'll never have a powerful relationship to your gut level honest. Now, I'm going to say something that doesn't sound really 
Easterish. <laughs> or spiritual. But it's good. It's spiritual. It's just, you know, it's not regular Sunday go to meet and stuff. Now this is, you know, I'm not trying to pray. This is Bible study, uh, theological. I got all that stuff. And so every now and then I throw something out at you. Just to keep you honest, let you know I did go get some learning. <laughs> anyway, one third of the Psalms that are written are called lamented songs. Lament, lamented songs. Which means, you know what lament means? To lament. Yes, it means to complain. Yeah. Talk about your struggles. Talk about your pains. And so David did that. One third of the Psalms are that way. One third of the Psalms are that way. Now, I'm, I'm about to say this, and you just look straight at me, okay? But see, there's a time when you come to God and say, God, right now, life is sucks. This sucks. I'm at home, at work, I come to church, all these fools. All, you, I'm just tired. Okay, maybe I'm the only one that's. <laughs> Oh, okay, everybody listen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> y'all know y'all better get with me. No, I mean, some, it's days like that. I had a day like that the other day. I'm like, man, can a brother catch a break? No, but I ain't bleeding. On, I'm not bleeding on her. I'm not bleeding on them. I, this is, I'm with God. I'm, I'm, I got, I'm gut level. And the reason why you got you to gotta talk that out with him so that bitterness doesn't sit in. Yeah. Yeah. That keep bitterness from setting in. God, if it was legal, even if it ain't legal. You know, I mean, you're talking to him. <laughs> yeah, okay, y'all already know. Yeah, yeah. No, you got to have a call. You got to be gut level on it. God, you know what? I got to overcome this. I'm tired of this. The same thing. I said, I've been repenting of this for, golly, for six months. Oh, okay. Now, I don't know why I keep, why do I keep yielding to this? Get gut level. You ain't got to talk to nobody else about it. But when you have a relationship, you don't, mm, when you don't have a relationship, you go everywhere. You go on Facebook, everybody, telling everybody. When you got a relationship with God, you go into, that's why the Bible said, go into your secret place. Secret place is for what? Wow, that's deep. <laughs> but you got to be gut level. Watch this. He already, he already knows. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about relationship. Yeah. So tell him when you're hurting. That keeps you from getting bitter. And bitterness is the enemy to intimacy. Now, I want to close. And, um, huh? Oh, wow, what? I'm closing so early? <laughs> Thank you, Brother Jim. Well, I'm my clothes, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm still, I'm still at 37,000 feet. <laughs> I want to close talking to two groups. You're in one of, you're, you're in one of these groups. And I want to close talking with, talking to you. If you are in trouble right now, I don't know what kind of trouble you're in, maybe relationship trouble, marriage trouble, financial trouble, physical trouble, emotional trouble. Uh, any, I don't know what kind of trouble it is. I don't know what kind of trouble it is. But if you're in trouble, God got something to say to you. Go to uh, okay, Psalm 91 in the Message Bible. I want everybody to look at the screen. I want you to read this. Don't, don't take nothing right now. Just hold the phone. Wait till you get outside. If you'll hold on to me for dear life, says God. Hallelujah. 
I'll get you out of any trouble. I'll give you the best of care if, everybody say if, if. you'll only get to know and trust me. He's not asking you to run a marathon or climb Mount McKinley or Mount Denali or whatever. He said, listen, I'll get you out of what trouble? Any. Oh, say it like you know it. What kind of trouble? Any trouble. If you'll just, and, and give you the best of care, if you'll just get to know me and trust me. It's all about relationship. Your answer is in the relationship. Your answer is in the relationship. I was talking to God this week, last week, and and you know he he you know he's straightening me out on some things, and and he said you you know how to win, and he said he said yeah, yeah. Mm. he said you 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 shepherd them people into winning. I'm like, what does that mean? He said you're teaching, but you got to. It's one thing to teach, it's another thing to pastor. Anybody, well, not anybody. And so he said, the sheep, they do all kind of stuff. You got to, some of them, you got to go, not y'all, but, you know, like in the shepherd field. You got you to gotta slap them. You got to tell them, no, you got to get over here. Get your, listen, that's why you get, that's why the wolves are eating your tail. You got to stay over here. You know, shepherd. In other words, he said, tell him. He said, you, 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 when you see people getting off, you, you tell them, baby, you're getting off. All that stuff you're saying don't even make sense. You're off. Now, do you want this? Now, just tell me. Because if you don't want I just need to know. Once you tell me, then I'll, I know where I'm at. So. That's how much he loves us. And let me tell you something. I love God, man. I'm, I don't do everything perfect, but I'm, I'm, I'm committed to him. Yes. That's why people can't intimidate me. Because, he, anyway, you don't need to know all that. Um, he said, he said, if you only get to know me and trust me. So whatever kind of trouble you're in, you know, your trouble may not be my trouble. What I'm trying to do is, See, all that Jesus did is to get us back to intimacy with God. Okay, let me hurry. Um, that's the first group. Well, no, no, no. This is, this is group 1A, 1B. Maybe you used to have an intimate relationship with God in the past. And the thrill is gone away. B.B. <laughs> King, everybody. No, maybe you used to have an intimate relationship. Maybe you're like, Pastor, I know what you're talking about. But that was, I was back then. Go to, uh, let's go to Job. Look on the, uh, the Living Bible, Job 29, 2 through 4. You used to have an intimate relationship with God. Verse 2, oh, for the years gone by when God took care of me. How many of y'all got a testimony? Boy, I remember when the Lord was good back in 1999. Woo, God was good. 99, baby, this is 2017. I know, it was good back then. Is it good now? Well, you know the Lord tired. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I just, I really, I just, I don't know where that came from. Okay. Okay, but how many of y'all remember? No, don't wave your hand. Don't, don't wave your hand. How many of you remember when that relationship was so good and you seen God come through? You seen God take care even in spite of you? Because there's something called goodness. Mercy. See, y'all know? Yes. Goodness and mercy. When you know you know, had nothing to do, nothing to do with what you did. 
God took care of him. Job was recalling them. Look at verse 3. Okay, when he lighted the way before me, and I walked safely through that darkness. Verse 4. Yes, in my early years. Watch this. When the friendship of God was felt in my home. Woo! See, God's presence needs to be in a home, y'all. Now, when I come here, like all that said, that was wonderful. But if all I do is all of that here, so maybe you were close to God. Maybe you remember that passion. But you're not close now. That passion has waned. Life has a way of numbing you out of the passion of God. Jesus said it this way. He said the love of many will wax cold. It's a, it's a process. I told you about the candle. They, 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 when they, let me, I don't say do them like that now. Back in the old days, they used to take a wick and they dip it in the wax, pull it up, and it cools. Then they keep dipping it, and next thing you know, start with a little string. Now you got a big old candle. And that's what happened to our heart. We neglect the relationship with God, and so, and so our heart began to wax cold toward God. That's why he said, I wish you were hot or cold. I need to know. And that passion in early years, there was time, you know, I mean, like I said, we've been this a long time, been in this, I've been in this church since it started. And I've seen people over the years just wax. Their passion just, well, you know, I'm older now. Well, your passion ought to be older. When things used to be a priority, it's no longer a priority. It's like, ah, oh, whatever. In them early years, there should be a friendship of God in my house. We talked about God in the house. We watched videos of God in the house. You know, we would, we would teach our children, baby, this is, listen, Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks, so is he. Hey, that's, your, that's, your, that's your snack for school today. Somehow the passion gone, wore off. Maybe he got so busy being busy that now I can't talk God. It's like, I I'll get to you. God wants a relationship. Yeah. All right. The second group. Well, that's like second group and first group. Thank you, Lord. And if I'm not careful, it's a process, but if I'm not careful, I'm going to say it in this next place, but if I'm not careful, I'll, I'll excuse myself. I'll excuse myself. And what I mean by that is, I like, it's okay. It's okay. You know, everybody can't be like uh, Alvin Nixon. Everybody can't, you know, he's got something special. You know, everybody can't be faithful like that. He got something different. Mm-hmm. You see them? You see them right there? Like, like everybody can't, everybody ain't like that. We're not asking you to be like that. God is asking you to be who you are. Express your relationship how you express it. Express your passion how you express it. God ain't looking, look, I'm telling, I'm, I'm going to do a message one time, like, God ain't looking at what we looking at. No, we no, we got we got an idea. God, I mean, that's a certain thing. That thing that you think don't please God, God ain't paying no attention to. It's amazing. We come up with all these all these rules, but uh, okay, let me close this thing out. It's Easter. Now this is for the people, second group that want that relationship back. You want it, or you want it back. You may have a good relationship. I'm trying to just stir you up to like, man, take, put that joker in overdrive, turbo, and peel off. That's what happened to me. I asked my wife, I said, how's your relationship with God? You got a relationship with God? You know, just, well, I wasn't challenging her. Don't tell her I was trying to challenge her. I was just asking a question. And I'm telling you, and I'll say this from a... <clears throat> 
when you have a relationship with God, so many other things just don't matter. Things that folk get all bent out of shape and, and lose their spiritual manners over. When you got a relationship with God, you're like, it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. That's the people. I, I, I guarantee you, if you worry a lot, you don't have a relationship with God. You, you don't worry when you know God. First of all, God said, don't worry. I got you. But we got a relationship. I, I, just, I just want to bring it to your attention. You know, deadline's Friday. I don't know how you're going to do it because I can't. But we'll just wait. We'll, it's Wednesday. I'm going to keep praising you. And listen, and even when Friday comes, I'm going to still praise you. Okay. Whew. Now, this is for those that want your relationship back. Don't you want your relationship back? Okay, all right. Verse uh, Jeremiah 15, 19. Thank you for being so patient here. This is how the Lord responds. If you will return to me, I will restore you so you can continue to serve me. <laughs> See, a lot of people are convinced that God is disgusted with them, don't want a thing to do with them. That's not the God we serve. That may be part of your denomination thing, but that's not God. Man. Okay. If you speak good words rather than worthless ones, you will be my spokesman. You must influence them and do not let them influence you. Wow. Have you let other people influence you in the wrong way? The people you're with, the people you're hanging with, the people you, you, you traffic with, the people you're in relationship with, do you let them influence you in the wrong way? God said you're supposed to be influencing them. And he said, he said, if you return, I'll restore you. God is good. This is a year of restoration. He's restoring all kind of stuff. But he's talking about now, he, we're talking about relationship now. God, like, I want you. The priority of every human being is to know God, love God. And then that's why he said, seek first what? And then what will happen? All the things will be what? They'll be, they'll be added to you. He didn't say seek the thing and then we'll add God to you, the kingdom to you. He said seek first the kingdom and all these things. And Deuteronomy said, and all these blessings shall do what? Come on you and what? Can they overtake me with me seeing them? No, they overtake me from the back. I'm busy about my relationship. Oh, what was that? <laughs> wow, God, you good. Yeah. That's how it works, saints of God. That's how it works. Return to God. The devil has nothing for you. We've been talking about, you know, him, his tricks, his strategy. He'll string you along. He's patient. He'll string you along until there's a point of no return where he totally got you destroyed. And God said, listen, on Easter Sunday. Yes. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. From you, he died. So that, because he, where did Jesus go? He went back to the Father. Okay, I'll help you with the hard ones. <laughs> Y'all was slow on that one. I said, he is, did the resurrection. He said, he, he, did, he didn't get up. <laughs> okay, but, but all of that was, the Bible says that we have the same fellowship that him and the Father have. We've been raised up to sit together with him. But we want to experience the power of the resurrection until there's relationship. Every head bowed, every eye closed for just a moment. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. You're reaching out to us. You're stretching out to us. You're the God that forgives. You're the God that restores. You're the God who, who tries to break in before we get too far. You're the God who loves us with a relentless, unconditional love. You're the God who desires personal, intimate relationship with us. 
My God, how can a holy God want to be with us? The Lord, we thank you. We accept your invitation. Father, I preached what you gave me. I shared what you gave me, most of it <laughs> that I know. There are people listening to me right now who need to, their relationship restored to God. They need to come back to God. You had a relationship like that. In your early days, and maybe you grew up in a home. I don't know, but, but you've been in the things of God, and somehow life had a way of getting you off, and God brought you here today to say, hey, I'm not disgusted with you. You can still have a red, hot, intimate relationship with me. I'm not done with you. I am not done with you. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. I'm not done with you. The gifts and calling of God are without repent. I'm not giving up on you. Well, Lord, I promise you, promise you. Don't worry about the promise. I just, don't make any promises. Just commit. I'm going to give you an opportunity today. I want to pray. I believe there's a lot of people in this building right now and you're out of the will of God because, I don't know, you're either chasing some other things and, and you know, there's some things that, that got over into the area where they're priority to you instead of God. I want us to fix that. I want us to fix that. And, Father, I ask you to help us. Help us. Be gut-level honest this morning. You already know this is about us coming clean with you, not with anybody else. If you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I need to. I want to restore my relationship with God. I understand my purpose is wrapped up in my relationship. I understand my satisfaction, my contentment is wrapped up in my relationship. It's the will of God. I want God's delight. I want to do that this morning. Thank you, Father. Now, what I want to do, I want to pray. And I believe there's a lot of people in here, so I'm not going to ask you to come up front or anything. I believe there's a lot of people in this building, a lot of people. I know this is a now word for this group. Some of you have been in church a long time, but you don't have a relationship with God. You got caught up in religion and rules and rituals and, you know, spiritual gymnastics, church gymnastics, I should say. And God is saying, no, I want you. I want you. I want you. I want you. Their opinion of you means nothing. My acceptance of you can change your world. How many of you here right now? I want to pray in just a minute. How many of you? With every head bowed, nobody looking around. I'm going to look around, though. How many of you right here will raise your hand and say, Pastor, I need to restore my relationship with God? I want you to raise your hand. How many people here? Okay. All right. All right. Okay. How many of you in here said, I don't need to restore it. Restore means I already had it. How many said, I've never had it? I've never had a relationship with God, and I want to. I want to establish one today. I want you to raise your hand. Anybody? Okay. I'm going to pray. We're going to pray. Thank you, Lord. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Not the God didn't try to scare the hell out of us. It's His goodness. And I think we heard about that this morning. I want everybody who raised their hand to pray this with me. And if you want to pray it along with us, I want you to do it. Thank you, Lord. Pray this with me. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, thank you for reaching out to me today. You desire a relationship with me. I desire now to be restored 
to that place of passion, fire, power, and strength. In the name of Jesus, I receive strength now to tell myself no. I receive strength to put myself in check. I receive strength to not be influenced by the wrong people and the wrong things. I thank you now for receiving me. I bless you in the name of Jesus. And from this point forward, I ask you and give you permission to arrest me when I get off. Help me judge myself in every area of my life. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let me pray for you that made that, if you prayed that and you really meant it. And only, you know, I'm not just saying you didn't, but Father, your people came to the throne of grace. We came to the throne of grace boldly this morning, and we do thank you. And I believe our best days are ahead of us even now. I believe something broke in this place where we put the main thing, the main thing. Thank you for allowing us to be in this place this day to hear this word and to hear your heart thank you for loving us beyond description thank you for your mercy thank you for your compassion thank you Lord for growing us up in the name of Jesus amen praise God well, can we just give God an awesome praise and applause for what's going to happen? Woo! Thank you, Lord. I am not going to be the same again by my relationship.